Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Amherst Conservation Commission meeting. It's September 22nd, 2021 at 7.04 p.m. It looks like we have everybody, which is exciting, right? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, first item on the agenda, comments from me. Um, I don't have anything specific. It seems like this meeting um, was going to be really full, but we have a couple of continuations from SWCA. Um, there are two hearings, so uh, we should be able to do it in like a semi-reasonable amount of time if we stay focused. Um, go team. Um, so with that, Dave, Aaron wasn't sure if you had anything to add. Do you have any last minute additions or updates? For Aaron or myself? Yeah, for you, Dave. I have a few, I, I have a few updates. Now we have a lot of time, so we can talk for no, an hour. No. <laughs> we don't have a lot um, of time. <laughs> no, I can go quickly as, as usual. Um, but one exciting note is we do have a new recreation director in town. His name is Ray Harp. And he's from Northampton, and um, he's been involved in athletics and and sports and and education um, for for over twenty years in Northampton. And and um, I was part of the the search team that uh, uh, arrived, uh, you know, at uh, at at uh, Ray as a great candidate. So he joined us for the first day today, and it's going to be very really exciting. And you know, I talked to him about recreation areas and conservation areas, and and uh, potential synergy. And so, so it's really exciting to have a new recreation director. So that's that's one new thing coming, coming our way. So you'll hear more about Ray. Um, let's see, a couple of other quick updates from the field. Um, we are beginning to mow those areas that are uh, specifically not in, in box or, or, or wood turtle habitat. Um, we try to avoid those areas until after the first frost. So you'll see Brad and Brendan around a little bit They've got a lot on their plate during uh, the, the remainder of what's left of September and October. So we're not gonna be doing a lot of mowing until November and we'll just play it by year and see how the how the snow uh, and the winter goes. We get a lot of complaints, I will say. People love the field habitat. They love walking through fields, walking their dogs through fields. So it's always, it's always a, a bit of a, a mixed bag there. Um, in terms of uh, other, other things going on, this Saturday is the Fort River cleanup. I don't know if any of you have heard about this, but it's organized um, in large part by the Fort River Watershed Association, a group that I've been helping out um, for the last couple of years. Um, that is Saturday morning. I think it's around 9 at Groff Park. 9.30? 10. 10. Okay. 10, wow. 10 at Groff Park. Yep. All right. So you can sleep in and still help the Fort River, whatever. Um, I will be at Hickory Ridge um, doing some cleanup there. So if anybody's around and you want to stop by and say hi or get your, your hands or your feet wet or dirty a little bit, uh, by all means. Um, Dave, if you have a yeah. little kids that we want to bring at, at Hickory Ridge, can you get to the creek without like bushwhacking big time right now? Or is it pretty thick? Um, do you mean see the, see the Fort River or no, get like in help it? help clean up. Like I'm trying um, to think of a way we can bring, you know, littles um, spot well, up some, forever. Some of the cleanup at Hickory is even kind of in the bushes. You don't have to get right down in the river. I don't think the fort is running pretty high right now and it's pretty deep yeah. in that section. So I don't know as we're going to be getting, I know we're not going to be pulling anything out of the river or we're not going for golf balls. It's actually a fairly clean section. There's no, no, as far as I know, no tires or big waste down there, but there's just things in the bushes all over. You know, when, when that floods, stuff comes down the fort and plastics and other stuff get mixed in the bushes. So it's, it's still a beautiful place to go. And, you know, I think you can bring littles and, and see the river and, you know, um, so. Okay, cool. You know, you Thanks. use your best judgment. Yeah, yeah. Speaking, speaking of Hickory Ridge, um, we are beginning to do a little work there. The cleanup will happen. We're beginning to meet with the current owner. The closing is now scheduled for late October, which is good. We actually have a date, um, plus or minus the 29th of October. So we're beginning the, when the lawyers start getting serious, then you know something's gonna happen. So um, that's looking promising. Um, my staff was actually over there and they were just 
mowing the edges of the uh, bituminous pathways, you know, the old cart paths that were there. Nature was kind of taking over those. So they, they brush hogged a little bit along the, uh, the bituminous pathways so we don't lose those to, uh, to uh, the, the overgrowth. Um, let's see what else is going on out there. Sweet Alice, um, parking is all open down there on Bay Road. I think it looks really nice. They've got a few things to touch up down there. They're gonna put in a little more uh, split rail fence, Brad and Brendan. Um, we are working, Aaron's working with me and a couple of other staff on the trail improvements that you all, um, um, that went through the commission. Uh, and those trail improvements, we're, we're, we're getting bids on those right now. So some of them will happen before the snow flies. Some we might, uh, some of the more complex ones to the south might wait until the spring. There is a Kestrel event happening at their office on 10-3. I'm not sure if some of you might have gotten invited. It's if you're members of Kestrel, it's kind of a membership event so they can show off their new, their new office. And Aaron and I will both be there. I think I'll be there for the whole day and Aaron will be there for part of the day. And we'll kind of meet and greet and mingle a little bit with, with Kestrel members. Um, I will also, I'll send you out an invitation to the next event I wanted to bring to your attention. Unfortunately, it's during the week, so it's tough for people uh, both with, with children, uh, school uh, and, and work. But on 10-6, Kestrel and the Food Bank are celebrating the Zala project. And you remember we participated in that in a small way. We protected 20 acres out of about 200 up in North Amherst, both on the Amherst side and the Hadley side of the, of the line, the, the town line. I'll send you out an invitation. It's gonna be a nice event. Um, Lynn Grismere is gonna speak briefly at the event. I'm gonna speak briefly at the event. It's mostly the food bank's gig because the food bank helped protect over 170 acres of land there. And they're gonna own and manage the agricultural land on the Hadley side, but we'll manage the, the Amherst side. So I'll send you that event. If anybody's around on 10-6, it'll be a fun event with lots of, um, I think they were even trying to get the governor. I don't know if they're gonna have any success with that. Um, what else? And then the Robert Frost trail work um, as, as permitted through the commission is, is continuing bog bridging. We're beginning to shift over to the bridges that were approved. We also got a $15,000 donation from the Kestrel Trust to help with some of that work. One of their donors is, is very um, uh, a strong supporter of the Robert Frost Trail. So that's really nice to get that money to uh, pump into those projects. So a lot of stuff going on. It's kind of the race against winter at this point um, and trying to get as much done as we possibly can before the snow flies. So those were five or six quick updates and I will get you some information on the Zala event. Um, Dave, I have one question. Mm. I So the um, stretch of the KC Trail between Southeast Street and the rail trail that goes over the Hot Brook. Mm, yes. Um, I noticed that Brad and their team has been doing a bunch of clearing and I know that it's, I'm assuming it's related to eventually replacing that bridge. And so when I get questions, I've been saying, you know, it's permitted work, but I was wondering if there's any update on, like, are they shooting to do that this fall? We're not really getting low flow. Just yeah, I no, I think we lost the window of opportunity there. Um, I did respond to some neighbors concern and some user concern there. And I think they were legitimate. Um, uh, we did do some trail clearing there. And then Brad did a little hardening. And unfortunately, he used what I think is probably the wrong size rock. Yeah. And so what if you go down there, you can see that I think it's like three inch, maybe yeah. something like that. It's like three yeah. inch instead of like inch, inch and a half. Right. And so we're gonna we're gonna kind of cover that with a smaller stone, and that way it'll be easier to walk on. But um, the bottom line is there won't be that bridge is permitted to be that was permitted a year or more ago by the commission. Um, but Aaron has been working on that. I've been working on that, Brad. Um, it's a conundrum. It's a, it's a difficult site. It's a perennial stream, a rare and endangered species, um, and a big ticket, uh, a big price tag. So where we've been, Aaron's been doing some 
imagining we had the town engineer down there a couple of times and, and we're still grappling a little bit with the design. If we change the current design, we'd obviously have to come back through the commission. I don't think it'd be a radical change, but we're just trying to figure out it's about a, I think it's about a 25 to 27 foot span there, something like that. So it's not an insignificant little, little bridge and it needs to support um, farm equipment getting over it. So I think a year and a half ago when we did that, we underestimated a little bit what would be needed. I think we're in the price tag of 30,000 plus to actually do that. So that's not trivial. So I don't think there will not be a new bridge there this fall, but we hope uh, we'll get one in in 21. Okay, great. Question for me too. Uh, what, what's happening with Marker Pond and, and the, the dam, uh, Dave? Oh, that's a good question, Larry. My favorite dam uh, <laughs> in, all of, in all of Amherst. My favorite tiny, tiny, tiny little dam. Um, but I probably get the most questions about that dam um, from, from the neighborhood. They love that dam. Um, we did have some damage to the dam during that last, uh, you know, we've had a very flashy, lots of flashy storms in 21. Those will continue. Um, the town engineer, I've been communicating with him. He had some suggestions for us on how to beef that dam up a little bit uh, in terms of uh, the um, a lot of the trap rock, uh, uh, the various sizes that were kind of armoring that dam washed over. You've right, probably right. seen it. Right. Um, so we need to come back and really take a look at that and say, what are we going to do with these to kind of uh, bolster that dam because these flashy storms are going to continue. So. I, you know, it's holding water now. It's been a very wet summer, but it's not a perfect situation down there. If I honestly, if I had my druthers, I would take that dam out and free up that stream. And uh, yeah, we would not have this lot, conversation again. a lot of right? arguments from local people on that one. I know, I would I would never be invited back to Margaret's Pond or to Pond View Circle, but that, that's ecologically, that's what I firmly believe we should do there. Well, as you said, it, as you said, eventually it'll go away. <laughs> well, not if we armor that dam. That thing will be there well, long I mean, after the, we're all the, gone. The dirt coming in and so forth. It'll just eventually yeah, it will fill, fill in. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's the sediment is filling that pond eventually. But we will take a look at making it safe. We've got to make it safe. If we keep a pond, it's got to be safe there. Yep, that right. dam's got to be safe. All right, any more questions for Dave? All right, thanks, Dave. Aaron, do you have any updates for us? Yeah, um, I just wanted to say quickly, piggyback on what Dave was saying on Zala, that um, Eversource completed construction of the, um, uh, the wetland creation project on Zala. And so the vernal pool has been created and the bvw has been created and and that project is 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 done and they're going to be installing a um a sign which dave and i have approved um so they'll be fabricating that and installing it and then kind of more to come after that i think as far as um that property but just to let you guys know if you want to go check it out and it, it looks, looks great it looks great i didn't want to steal your thunder there Aaron. i thought about including that, but I was like, you've really overseen that, not me. Um, so it looks really good. Um, they did a wonderful job and it's gonna be a really interesting to watch that pool and, and see what finds it next spring. I'm sure a lot of herps are gonna find it next spring, so. Dave, yeah. are you able to show us the sign that you showed the dog park committee um, that's going has have has the commission seen that yet? I can't. Sorry if I'm mixing up things, but the new sign that's going under the common school sign. So, yes, I can show it to you in a very non-technical way, if that's okay, because um, I gave it to Brad and um, I gave it to Brad and and Brendan today to put up. So, um, I think I mentioned you before. Whoops. Yeah, I, I think I mentioned you before. What I'd like to do is, is do a pretty uh, comprehensive um, new sign program for, for conservation. And I think likely we would do it for recreation areas too. What I'd like to do is um, move away from kind of the old kind of folksy signs from the 1970s, which are hand routed and really brand town property with our, our shield, which I think everyone's familiar with. If you, 
if you go, if you're in town and you go to the new Kendrick Park playground, which is, um, you know, in the center of town, there's a, a beautiful new sign there with kind of the, the, the colors that we want to um, use in, in all of our signs throughout town. So I asked Angela if she would just mock one up and and we could try one out. We don't have the money for all of these signs yet. And I'm gonna do this in a really kind of non-technical way. I don't, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Sorry, that I just have it on my phone and can you see that? Move it up a little bit higher. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah, that looks good. Well, yeah. Underneath it, it says conservation. Like yeah, yeah. it says yeah. March Hill Conservation Area Town of Amherst with the town seal. And um, we'll, uh, there has been no sign at Larch Hill for a couple of years. And so we'll just put it up there, give it a try. You'll see it up there in the next few days when you go and buy, take a look, see what you think about it. We can change fonts, all of that. But the idea would be to try to get some money and do something similar all over town to really let people know what is town property uh, both conservation and recreation. Um, to be honest, there has been a little bit of confusion as to what does Castro loan in town. And um, so I think part of my rationale here is we really need to let people know that it's taxpayer dollars for the most part um, that do maintain these areas and they're owned and, and um, you know, they're owned by the town under care and control of the CONCOM, but they're for all the people of the town to enjoy. So. So, um, okay, well, congratulations on, on Zala and Eversource site, Aaron. That's fantastic. Um, so I think the next thing was a, a review and approval of minutes. Is that right? Yes, yeah. Um, and we have three sets of minutes. So it, let's do the there's one way back, 10, 23, 19 minutes. Thanks, Aaron. Um, so we're just looking for a motion. I move we approve the minutes from 10, 23, 19. Second. Um, real brief, is that the one? There's one of them that has Laura and I as staff present, but we were actually not there. Um, oh, okay. Is that, I can is that make the one, that. 10, 23? There's 10, 23. I can, make that I can double no. check and. Um, I guess, yeah. One of them says staff present. It was both Laura and I, and it doesn't, that's not correct. Mm -hmm. It should be absent on that yeah. line. Yeah. I'll make sure to make that adjustment. Oh, I saw. Okay. So Larry, did you have a motion? What, what do you mean? Did, I, didn't, I, I didn't move it. You did. Yeah. <laughs> you did move it, okay. Do we have a second? Yeah, yes, second. we had a second. Okay, sorry. All right, no, voice vote. Good. Sorry, voice vote. Larry. Aye. Roy. I think I have to abstain, right? For these first two. Yeah, oh, okay. It's okay. it's okay. It's okay at this point because they're at this point we couldn't even, I don't think, really have a quorum for <laughs> <All right. laughs> we're just no. trying to get them posted because they're they're overdue. All right. So Michelle. Oh, you're muted. Good. Can you hear me? Oh, sure. now yes. we can. Yeah. Okay. Was not muted. <laughs> Aye. Okay. Fletcher. Aye. Anna. Aye. Laura. Aye. Okay. Sorry for that um, mental break. I always used to have to use teams at work and switching from teams to zoom is like hard for my brain so I can see anyone for a minute and I lost focus all right um next one is Feb February 12th 2020 I'll make a motion to move the accept the minutes for uh, February 12th 2020 second. Uh, we got a second from Anna it's okay Laura can have it <laughs> okay voice vote Larry I Leroy. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Anna. Aye. Laura. Aye. And I'm an aye. And then last set is 825-21. Aye. 
I move we approve the minutes for 82521. Second. Second. I think we Michelle. <laughs> All right. Aye. Voice vote, Larry. Aye. Roy. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Anna. Aye. Laura. Aye. And I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. um, so whatever that means. Stain. Okay. Um, conservation land use application. Do we have any? We don't have any okay. um, today. Okay. And so it looks like you wanted us to do a CPA recommendation next. Am I reading between the lines on that correctly? <laughs> yeah. So the, um, Anna, was, Anna is or was our CPA um, liaison, and they just want us to make uh, um, the town manager would like us to make a formal motion to appoint our liaison with CPA. Okay. And I know you guys discussed this at the last meeting, which I was not at. So was there, can somebody just catch me up quickly? Anna, is that something you want to continue to do? Or are we looking for a new CPA um, representative? I'd love to do it. And uh, presumably we'll be able to do it for the next few months. Okay. So do we feel comfortable um, appointing Anna? Yes. Or, yep. okay. Okay, great. Um, oh, can I make the motion? Yes, please. Yeah, I'd love to um, make a motion to appoint uh, Anna to the CPA. That, All right, and we have a second. I had to jump in, had to jump in before you were finished just because there's a- the, Such competition. The hot market yeah. for second. It is a hot tonight. market. All right, voice vote, Leroy. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Anna. Aye, can I vote on this? Aye. <laughs> Laura. Sure. Aye. Larry. Aye. And I'm an enthusiastic eye. Thank you, y'all. Thank you. Thank you for doing that, Anna. And could I just add one thing? It reminded me uh, that I did not mention the CPA process is actually beginning in earnest this year, very early, yeah. extremely early. And um, so I didn't want to surprise you. We actually have not developed in, in, in our department um, any proposals yet, but we have until a week from Friday to do so. Um, no surprises. I think we will put together probably two to three proposals, mainly having to do with trails, bridges, and likely put in one for Hickory Ridge as well. So um, I will get those to air in uh, soon after the 1st of October. They're due on the 1st of October. Perhaps at your next meeting, we could review them together as a group and um, talk through them. And then it'll take the uh, the CPA committee, you know, probably two months or so to go through them and vote on them probably before the holidays sometime. So it's a very normally in normal years, uh, the proposals are not due until December this year. Um, I don't know all the background Anna might uh, recall, but they decided to move the deadline to October 1st, which is a, a little challenging, but we'll do the best we can to meet it. David, would the would the uh, the dam fit into that category? Um, you mean I ecological don't... restoration and removal of the dam? Not removal, <laughs> but restoration. Oh. I don't think so, Larry, because um, um, CPA dollars have to be spent on land purchased with CPA funds, and Margaret's Pond was donated to the town, and it was not purchased with CPA funds. So that's a, a tough restriction, but that's part of the law, the CPA yep. law. Okay, thanks for that update and thanks for doing that, Anna. Um, so we have two minutes before our first hearing. It looks like, Aaron, do you think we can do these um, certificates of compliance quickly enough? Yeah, yeah, they're both, um, I mean, uh, the 31 Bayberry, the house has been there for, I mean, I'm guessing probably since the early 80s. Um, they're just looking to clean the deed up on the property. And I've been out there. There was, there's really nothing surprising going on out there. Very stable ground. Um, 70 Moody Field Road, very stable. Um, so I think issuing complete certificates on both is completely fine. Okay. 
So it looks like we're looking for a motion. I move. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, we can do one motion for both, right? As it's written. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I move we issue a complete certificate of compliance for seven Moody Field Road and 31 Bayberry Lane. Second. Okay. Voice vote. Larry. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Anna. Aye. Leroy. Oh. Aye. <laughs> Michelle. Again, Michelle, try one more time. Not muted. Aye. Yeah, for some reason, it's like not picking up when you first Maybe say. Yeah, I have a slow connection. Sorry. Aye. Don't, don't apologize. We got it. Laura. Aye. And I'm an I. All right. So, did you want to fit anything else in in our one minute? Oop. Um. Well, I'll, I'll just do, I'll come back to the one other slide on other business, but just to let you guys know, we have a lot of major projects underway in town right now. And I just wanted to kind of quickly um, touch on just a quick bullet, bullet bulleted list. And this doesn't cover all of them, but like Farringbrook is, is mid process and hopefully will be wrapped up in the next week. East Leverett Road Waterline Project is midway through. Um, Mass DOT paving project on Route 9 and 116 is set to begin. I'm going to be inspecting erosion controls very soon on that one. Uh, the solar project on the landfill just kicked off. The Eversort st structure replacement there, I want to say about halfway through town at this point. So there is a lot going on in town as far as monitoring is concerned. But thankfully, we just crossed Podic off the list, So or uh, Zala. So just lots going on in town, and I wanted to let you guys know that. Saren. All right, so sh what do you think? Hearing? Okay, um, so let's see. Yeah, it's 7.31, let me just get my public hearing. All right, so let's see. Are you bringing anyone in again? Um, Alan Weiss, I'll pull in um, and then let me think. I think it's just Alan, unless okay. anybody else raises their hand that they're um, here for that hearing and want to speak. Okay, I don't have um, control over who's who. I can I can't let oh. in now. Aaron, you want to give me like I'm going to make you co-host. Sorry yeah. about that. Yep. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Alan. Hello, everyone. Greetings. Let me open this public hearing. So. This hearing is being, uh, this public hearing is now called to order. This hearing be, is being held as required by the provisions of chapter 131, section 40 of the general laws of the Commonwealth and act relative to the protection of wetlands as most recently amended and article 3.31 wetlands protection under the town of Amherst general bylaws. And this is a request for determination um, from Cold Spring Environmental Allen Weiss for Ben Demereth for septic replacement within the buffer zone supporting vegetated wetland at 30 Harris Mountain Road. And I understand that this is just straight up a, a replacement of a faulty system and definitely an improvement and better protection of the resource. So Alan, if you're comfortable with it, I think um, really a quick overview, um, maybe limiting it to three to four minutes just because our agenda is so tight um, tonight. That would be That'd really be great. great. Yeah, thank you. Alan Weiss, Cold Spring Environmental. Um, I think most of you folks have know me. Um, we're working on a septic system repair and I agree completely. It's a much improved situation over what's there now. Um, the property rather unique in setting um, is, is kind of fun. It's kind of funky, but uh, the reality is it's got resource areas that we have to contend with. Um, the leach field is proposed to be about 80 feet from an intermittent stream on the Southern side of the property um, and a the rest of the system is pretty much beyond the 100 foot boundary. There was no way to really bring it uphill uh, or away further from the stream just due to um, the offsets and slopes and things that we normally contend with when we do a septic design. The current system will be decommissioned. It's in a rather precarious position on a slope heading um, to the north beyond the fire pond um, that exists there and it is in a 
Um, obviously, it's also in the buffer zone, but the proposal is to work with that in the context of pumping those to the leach tank and septic tank and using flowable fill to uh, decommission them in place and then straw and mulch and seed so that there's no major disturbance at all around the old septic system. Um, I would say I agree completely that this is the best alternative that we can come up with here and it's rather straightforward. Okay, thank you, Alan. Aaron, did you have anything to add or any comments to share? Um, I will just share some quick photos from the site visit today. Um, just to give the board, I, these are in your, in your box. This is a picture of the fire pond. The septic system, I believe, is in this vicinity right here. Existing septic, septic system. Um, the house is, um, if you're looking at the fire pond, the house is to your left. And then, so this is turning, um, this is the, this is up on the hill and this is where the new septic system would go. So it's up on the hill, pretty far away from, um, from the, the pond and the BBW. And then down the slope a little bit from that, um, I believe is where, and I, maybe I'm getting this mixed up, that may, um, the, is the tank the above where the leach field's going where, where you the leach um, field. Okay. where you are now yeah okay the, yeah so um, the tank above the and the leach field below right right and and that's the opposite that's looking south and east, west from the uh driveway area right yep and then this is so so if you're you're sort of in this direction you're sort of facing the um Mount Holyoke Grange, it's kind of like up against the Holyoke Grange. So you're looking uphill. So thus, so the leach field's kind of facing the Holyoke Grange. And then if you turn to your left um, to the east, there, there's a stream coming down here, but it's um, slightly up gradient. So there's the, the paved driveway and then there's a topographic um, mound there. And then the, the streams on the other side. Yeah, effectively the paved area acts as a divide in addition to the siltation control that I have on the plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, but um, based on the proposal, seeing the site, I really don't have any concerns. It's a very straightforward um, septic replacement project. And um, as far as conditions, I think really just having erosion controls in place and then stabilizing upon completion are really the only, the only issues or concerns that I would have. Okay. Aaron, what addition, uh, inspection services and Ed Smith have already basically uh, moved to approve this. Okay, thank you both. Um, any further questions from the commissioners? Okay, and then um, if you are an attendee of the meeting and you have any questions or comments, public questions or comments, um, please raise your hand and we'll allow you to speak. Not seeing any raised hands, so I'm going to assume we're okay. Um, I don't have any concerns about this, so unless anyone else has any questions or concerns, we need a draft motion. I'll um, I'll make the motion. So, a motion to issue a negative determination in the wetlands bylaw um, box three and a positive determination under the local wetlands bylaw box five. Only conditions being um, erosion control and stabilization. Um, after it's complete, that's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. Thanks, Laura. Seven. Got a second from Leroy. Okay, voice vote, Leroy. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Larry. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Anna. Aye. And I'm an I. Great. All right, Alan. Thank you. Greetings. Good night, folks. Be well. Thank you. Good night. All right. I think I just kicked Alan out <laughs> in a friendly way. Okay. Um, next one, a notice of intent. Oh, this is for 300 North Pleasant Street, and this is a new hearing. So I think we have Bucky Sparkle in attendance for this one, which I think I saw him. Did you already move him? Yeah, yep. uh, Bucky and Joel, I believe, are both present for this, unless there's anybody else who wanted to speak. I just promoted both of them. Ah, here we are. 
All right, I see Bucky and Joel. Anyone else in the, um, any other attendees that need to join here? Just gonna assume no. All right, let me open this hearing. The public hearing is now called to order. This hearing is being held as required by the provisions of chapter 131, section 40 of the general laws of the Commonwealth an act relative to the protection of wetlands as most recently amended and article 3.31 wetlands protection under the town of Amherst general bylaws. So 300 North Pleasant Street, um, again, my understanding is that it, this is um, a vast improvement and reduction in impervious cover um, yeah. at this site. Yeah. Um, but Bucky, if you'd be willing to give us a pretty brief, you know, three to four minute overview, that would be fantastic. Happy to do. Um, for the record, my name is Bucky Sparkle. I'm the civil engineer for the project. Uh, the um, the applicant and owner, Joel Greenbaum, is also here tonight. Um, I'm, I'm happy to drive, Aaron, but also I can talk over, over your magic mouse work. So if you'd like to just go to the next screen, um, or if you would like me to share. So these are the people who are involved. Here's the overview. So <clears throat> I'm going to basically run through this quickly, and then we'll get to the pictures, because uh, the words are, are fairly important in this case. Uh, we've got a little over 14,000 square feet of BBW on site. Uh, we are within 200 feet of Tambrook as well. The project is to remove an existing building that we're hoping to save. It's not really savable. We're basically building the same thing back in place with a small extension and a deck. Uh, also removing a lot of parking area and putting back less parking area. Uh, we're going to reduce the impervious area on site by over three and a half thousand square feet and 3,100 square feet of that is in the buffer itself. There's no work in the BBW. Uh, we're moving the pavement back an additional 13 feet from the existing conditions. Uh, all of the new impervious area is within the footprint of the existing impervious area. Uh, we are also adding, there's no, there are no BMTs or stormwater on site, so we're adding a water quality swale that's going to capture virtually all of the surface runoff from impervious surfaces and uh, slow it down, detain it, infiltrate a large portion of that. Um, and I, realizing, and this is uh, what Mark Stinson mentioned in his letter today, um, that limited projects don't exist if you're in the buffer area, so I guess technically this is not a limited project because we're not into any resource areas. All right, Aaron, please, the next slide. Thanks. All right. Um, if we'll take a look at the existing conditions first. That's sort of the upper square. Um, and just to get a sense, the, I'm so used to driving these presentations. Um, the, the blue line on the left is uh, the BVW, all right? And then we have designated the 25, 30, 50, and 100 foot offsets from there. So those are all upland. The red area is the impervious area that is currently within the buffer. All of that is coming out um, and a smaller footprint is going back in. The tree line designates is designated by the, the green and there is a grass area and, and smaller vegetation between the pavement and the tree line. So if we look at the proposed conditions, we scroll down a little bit. So we have, um, you can see it. So this, these are different scales because I did want to show the entire project. So the top drawing is at one to 20. The bottom project, the bottom drawing is one to 10. So they're, you know, they're scaled um, by 100%. Um, if you look again at the bottom, you can see the blue line designates the BVW. That was, uh, it's been delineated multiple times, most recently uh, by who did we get? Ward Smith was out there. And it, I know the drawings are different scales, but you can see um, the, the light green shaded area in the bottom drawing used to be parking area and is all being converted to grass or in the case of the far uh, west side of the site, a water quality swale. You can see that sort of boomerang shape. Uh, that's a one foot deep, uh, relatively shallow side slope, so mowable. Uh, water quality swale with uh, infiltration wick bottom. Uh, so the entire site just drains right, right straight down the driveway, right through the parking lot, right toward the BW now. So we're going to capture all of that, including the roof runoff and putting up some vegetation. 
and as I mentioned, all the disturbance, virtually all the disturbances within already disturbed areas, and we're reducing the impervious areas significantly. And those, those are the high point highlights of the project. So if the commission has questions, I'm happy to talk about. Them. Thanks. That was a great quick overview, Bucky. Appreciate it. Um, Aaron, do you want to share any photos and give us your input? Yes. So um, let me see. So this is the parking area now. This is looking from the parking area back and you can see like this pink flag. The BVW is basically bisecting this, this lawn area here. And then this is, you can see it extends um, through the back. And then this is um, on the, um, the north side of the existing parking area. Um, so my primary concern on this one um, for my initial re initial review was um, basically, you know, water related and also because there was an existing um, foundation drain which, which drained directly to the BVW and um, initially they were, um, discharging it fairly close to the BVW. And so the concern was basically, um, I wanted to see that water captured and, and treated and infiltrated before it got to the BVW. And so um, on speaking with Bucky about that, that's when they incorporated the water quality swale and pulled back the outlet from the foundation roof drain um, so that it discharges into the water quality swale. Um, so, I think a pretty straightforward project and I mean I, I don't want to so there the one elephant in the room is the fact that the tan brook is within 200 feet of this site so I just like to just address that for one second um they're not asking for us to designate the stream one way or another so I think that's an important consideration here and the other consideration is the improvement over existing conditions. So even if we were to assume that the Tanbrook was perennial and that this was a riverfront redevelopment project, the standards that they'd be required to meet would be an improvement over existing conditions, um, trying to make efforts to reduce impervious surface as opposed to creating more impact. And in this case, they are reducing impervious surface and they're um, you know, pulling the impact away from the BVW. So I do think that this is ultimately going to be an improvement over existing conditions and what's there. The water quality swale will be set up. I don't think that there's any water issues on the property right now, but with all the rainstorms that we've been having, I think that this is a good mitigation in the, in the case that we do have more heavy rains in the future, that there'll be a system there to capture it and treat it. Okay, fantastic. And this was also, um, you had your initial kind of, not concerns, but just feedback that you wanted a water quality swale, but then also there was no butter comment um, that this water quality swale addresses as well. So correct. Correct. So just so everyone understands. Um, Joel, did you have any questions or comments or anything to add? I'm seeing a nod. We didn't hear you, but I saw, I it looked, that looked like a no. <laughs> no, thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, commissioners, any questions or comments? Quick one. What is a water quality swale? Is there anything in this swale or is it just a swale? Um, there is something in this swale. You said uh, it something is earlier and I didn't hear it, yeah. It okay. is detailed on the plans. The, the bottom of it is, um, it, it's relatively narrow, but it's six inches of sand with a single layer of geotextile. Beneath that is another six inches of open graded stone that's wrapped in geotextile. That way the sand ultimately gets clogged, it becomes vegetated, you can rake that out. If you, if you have to shovel it all out, you can pull up that single layer of geotextile and still keep um, the, the stone intact and um, silt free because the top layer has a tendency to get clogged. So I throw in two of them. You, you throw that one away when it, gets, when it stops working. Um, mm -hmm. five years, 15 years from now, I, I don't know, but someday. Uh, so that's, that's the idea. So the, the swale itself is a foot deep. 
It is 11 feet wide. It holds about 426 cubic feet of water when it is totally full and it's designed to just drain back down into the earth after some hours, maybe 24 hours if it's a, a wet spring situation or frozen ground. Cool. Oh, all right. Thanks. Okay. Um, just a quick pause. Bar oh. Barbara Pearson, I see your hand raised. We'll get to some public questions and comments in, in one second. Let me just make Actually, sure. Yeah. Can I just jump in one more time? Sorry. Yep, absolutely. Would that yes. swale, would, would it be more beneficial? Because I know you said you want to mow it. Hmm. Would it be more beneficial to like do some type of plantings around it? I know you need to get access in there in order to clean it and to maintain it, which is totally understandable. But do you think it would be better to like plant well, if, if this there. were designed more as a rain garden, where the plants themselves were doing mm -hmm. some of the work of biological digestion, where they were doing uh, transpiration, you know, liquid uptake and sending it off to mm -hmm. the atmosphere, uh, I, the, the plants are then very important and part of it. In this case, um, grass line swales are, are great. The grass does a, a, a nice job of filtering. If you get mm -hmm. shrubby type of mm -hmm. plants, then you end up with, you know, root bases and then open area in between. So the grass is really part of the filter system. All right, just throwing it out there. Cool, thanks. Yeah, good question. Thanks, Fletcher. I think also, yeah, I think it depends on your water quality concern too, Fletcher, and that the reason I didn't hesitate with a grassland swale is because, I mean, most likely it's gonna be turbidity and like sediment coming off of of the driveway, right? And so you know a filter fabric and a grass, tighter grass matrix is gonna be better at filtering that. If it was, you know, some sort of nutrient runoff concern, then I think a planted swale where you actually get nutrient uptake um, might be better. Um, is right. that I'm looking forward to when we have TMDLs for our waterways yeah. and that just gets rolled into the, the design process. I'm, Kind of, kind of excited because that, that's the more interest, some of the more interesting stuff. But it's, it's not really required. And of course, for this project, we, we don't have any standards that are even, you know, just do the do something, you know, make it better. But not, stormwater standards don't apply in this project. But we're still definitely making it a lot better with the reduction in impervious area, capturing a few hundred cubic feet, giving the sediment a place to actually deposit. Um, uh, several improvements. Okay, yeah, thanks. Seconded, thanks, Fletcher and Bucky. Any other questions from the commission for cl clarification? Okay, it looks like we're good. Um, so I we can take um, some short comments or, or constructive comments or questions from the public. So um, Barbara Pearson, I see you have your hand raised. Um, so I've allowed you to talk if you wanna ask any questions. Um, yeah, I just wanted a clarification, please. Uh, when I was looking through the materials um, today about this particular project, which is not too far from my house, um, it was, it, I, I thought it said that they were asking for the designation that Grace Creechie had gotten of the Tan Book Brook as intermittent. And I didn't understand why it needed it. And I was hoping it didn't need it. Yeah, so I can take a, a um, preliminary try at that. And then Aaron, if you want to step in, I, again, to repeat what Aaron said earlier, we are not designating Tanbrook either way as part of this project, um, whether or not Tanbrook is perennial or intermittent, it doesn't change the fact that this project is a net improvement at the site. Right. Um, so we are not addressing that in any way with this, with this project, okay. Aaron. So so they don't need it. I mean, they don't need it. And so it's not going to be, I, I was just surprised at why it was there. And since there was no good reason, it's good that it's not there. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, that's a great question. Erin, did you want to add anything or clarify anything? Yeah, so there's really, unless they're looking for a re have a, having a request for determination or to confirm resource area boundaries, in this case, they're just looking to approve the work. So there's really no reason for the commission to take a stance okay. on the status of the brook. And even if it was like, even if it was um, 
designated riverfront area, the, the improvements that are being proposed as far as removal of impervious and moving further away from BBW would make it completely permissible under the riverfront um, standards. So, And that, just to clarify, so it would be become a riverfront improvement project if Tanbrook were designated as perennial. So what Correct. we're saying is even if Tanbrook were perennial, this would still be an improvement um, and less potential damage to the we're doing a better job protecting the resource regardless of the designation of Tanbrook. Thank you. Um, that's it. Thank you for being here, Barbara, and asking that. Um, thank you for joining us. Did you have any more questions or follow up on no, that? No, I, I mean, it'll come up for the next project, but, yeah. <laughs> but okay. I didn't know. Yeah, no, you answered more than I needed. I'm, you answered it right the first time. Thank you. Okay. Great, great. So I'm going to um, disable you from talk to, for contributing vocally right now. And then it looks like we have another um, comment or question from Shirley. Shirley, welcome. Um, you should be able, if you unmute yourself, to um, ask any questions. OK. Um, I like the plan. I'm glad that the swale was added and that the uh, gutter runoff is going into it. I do have a question about the lawn. It looks as though the BVW line runs through the middle of Moan Lawn. Will that section of the BVW continue to be mown after the driveway is pulled back? Bucky, I'll let you field that one. Yeah. The intention, as, as this property has a very limited uh, yard area, the intention is to not change the existing condition. Um, the, we do have to get landscaping equipment back there uh, to be mowing the swale uh, anyway, which ultimately will probably become a BVW in and of itself just by its own nature. Um, it, it is definitely the applicant's preference to, to continue the uh, use of the yard as has, has been historically the case. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. It's not usual to allow mowing of wetlands, but um, perhaps it will function better as mown. I don't know. Anyways, that's up to the commission. I hear what you're saying, Shirley. I think the issue here is that it's a relatively small area and they'll have to get in there anyway to mow the swale so that it works in the way we want it to. Um, so my input on that as a commissioner would be that I think the net gain of having that swale maintained properly is much outweighs the small loss of the small area that's mowed inside of BBW. Um, but that is, that's my input and commissioners, if anyone has further questions or input on that, um, I would encourage you to speak up. <laughs> and I, I, I back that up, Jen, but I think it's important to know it, we're it's also we're not losing anything. It's just a continuation of what's already going in. I exactly. might have more questions if there was any loss, but to your point, there is not. Yep. Thanks for that, Lorraine. Yeah. And I totally appreciate your question and where you're coming from on that, Shirley. But unfortunately, if these water quality swales become overgrown and are not maintained, then they really do nothing. They just overflow and everything I agree. right into the wetland, so. Right, I agree that it does have to be maintained. Yeah. Okay. And, um, so also to Shirley's, sort of to Shirley's point, um, some of, a couple of the conditions that I was going to um, suggest besides our sort of our standard state and local boilerplate, um, one of them was going to be uh, some sort of permanent demarcation. And again, that really depends on where the commission feels comfortable. But if the commission is going to allow them to continue to mow sort of in the existing extent of lawn, then I would recommend that we um, uh, place monumentation at the extent of the current lawn area so that it's clear that that area cannot be expanded any further from where it already is located. Um, and then the other suggestion is just to have an on a condition for ongoing maintenance of the swale required in the order of conditions so that um, they have to maintain that in perpetuity since that's located on the property as part of the order of conditions. Thanks for bringing that up, Erin. That's something we should have 
talked about, and that's something we often do is the demarcation um, of the existing MO line. Bucky, I'm sure I know that we've been through this before in projects with you in the past. Um, we've often done folders because they're just hard to move and hard to ignore, but I know in other sites, you know, owners, per, you know, applicants have chosen to put in fences and things like that. Um, is that something you're open to and um, commissioner's input on what demarcation we would prefer would be would be great here? Um, I, I think that the Joel, Joel has a few options. I, I also like boulders there. They, once they're there, they are very hard to move. You put in a fence, A, you have to dig a hole. And in this case, that would be, you know, a, a, an additional disturbance. We put a boulder down. Um, you know, that, that does alter things under the boulder a little bit. It'll be a different ecosystem under that. Um, uh, I, I would invite Joel, if you have any thoughts, if you would have a desire. So Joel, the idea is at the back of the grass yard where it transitions into wild growth, um, there, there needs to be some kind of demarcation to prevent further expansion of that yard 50 years from now when you and I are probably not talking about this property. So. Do you have an idea of what you a fence, um, boulders? Sometimes you can do heavy shrubbery, but there's already shrubbery. Well, I yeah. don't want to install a fence. I think it's unnecessary. Um, any type of a, a post in the ground on the corners, perhaps. I mean, you really can't mow it any more than it's already mowed because there's all kinds of vegetation around the edges, which is quite pretty. The birds love it. So. Um, I don't know. We're not going to mow any more than there is already. There's also the option of a, of placing some rebar markers, which are yeah, really un, unobtrusive. Fake of some sort. Yeah. Yep. Those are fine. They have like a little um, wetland marker on the top, and you just place them in the ground and um, drive them down, and those those can serve the same purpose. Yeah, I, I understand the concern. I mean, it's that particular lot, even though it's a huge piece of land doesn't have that much open space and the open space to the west of the driveway is very very pretty um, you know it's all closed in there's a lot of birds down there and I quite enjoy it so I'd like to leave the grass the way it is but I have no intention on making it any larger so if we could do some type of a stake rebar ribbon whatever that would be the best Thanks for your input, Joel. Thank you. Yeah, so it sounds like um, the compromise point is rebar. Um, and Aaron, maybe you can follow up with Bucky on like exactly what the specs are and those specific rebars that have the, the wetland demarcation top piece on them. Sure, yep. Um, Great. Uh, so sh surely that also kind of um, addresses your your comment and concern about um, that mowed lawn area. Yep. You can still talk to you. Okay, great. Um, so, um, attendees, um, does anyone else attending um, have any comments or questions? Not seeing anything. Okay. So commissioners, last chance, any co other comments or questions? Otherwise, I think we're moving towards a, a motion with some conditions here. Looks good. Okay. Looking for a motion. I feel like Anna's where's, going. Where's the cheat sheet? I was, but I was gonna say I was, but my <laughs> team decided to reload with my cheat sheet on it. Um, I move to approve the order of conditions DEP file number 089-0692 uh, for 300 North Pleasant Street with the conditions as discussed, including the rebar with a wetlands notation. Um, was that the only condition? And the state and local boilerplate that we always do. And then uh, ongoing maintenance of the swale, oh, please. Right. Yes, including ongoing maintenance of the swale. Thank Thanks, Anna. Second. We got, a, we got a second from Larry. Um, okay, voice vote, Leroy. Aye. Um, Michelle. Aye. Um, Larry. Aye. Laura. 
Uh, okay, Anna. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Aye. Laura, are you there? She must have stepped away. Um, I'm an I. Okay. Thank you, Bucky and Joel. Thank you very much. It's good to see you again, and I'll be back. Thank you. All right. Aaron, nice to meet you. You too. <laughs> Take care, guys. Thank you. Okay. All right. So great work, everyone. Next item on the agenda. This is an ANRAD 452 Fearing Street. Um, this is a, this is continued um, from a past meeting, so I don't have to, to re, to open a hearing. Um, so let's see, attendees. First, let's just update everyone on what's going on with this project. Um, we, so if you recall, we were doing a third party review of the delineation at Fearing Street, but in addition to that, the heart of the matter is the designation of Tan Brook as intermittent versus perennial. So um, we got yes, late yesterday, Emily Stockman's third party review letter um, came in and Aaron included that in our files. We didn't have a ton of time to review and process that and SWCA certainly hasn't had time to make changes according to Emily's um, recommendations. Further, one of Emily's main recommendations was that we consult with the state DEP and the town attorney um, to understand how we can proceed with even just reviewing the designation of Tanbrook as perennial versus intermittent. Um, so I've, through Aaron, kind of spoken with Mickey Marcus from SWCA and asked for more time so that we can get input from town council and really guidance from the DEP um, about how we go about kind of creating a defensible redelineation of, of Tanbrook. Um, so uh, after that communication, um, Mickey agreed to request a continuation to the next meeting so that we have more time to make sure that we can proceed in the, in the most solid regulatory footing possible um, for understanding the designation of, of Tanbrook. Um, so Aaron, did I summarize that sufficiently? Yeah, you okay. did. And, and I just wanted to clarify one point about that. So the question on the watershed delineation is the fact that when we go into stream stats and place a point at the poor point, which is basically, um, there's case law that determines where that point can be placed. But generally speaking, it's at the furthest extent of the resource on the given property that you can place that point. And what that does is that delineates all of the upstream watershed um, of the stream so that you can then calculate the um, square area of that, right? So in this case, what we're really interested in, is it under a half uh, half of a square mile. square mile or over a half square mile. Um, so when there, there are different sections of the regulations that apply here, but um, one section is that if, when you place a point in stream stats, if it, if it um, creates a watershed boundary in stream stats, then um, that's one of the sections is to use stream stats. And when we draw that boundary, we are of the strong opinion that that boundary is not drawing accurately for several reasons. And so um, in stream stats, you can, you can actually create a revision directly in stream stats of the watershed. However, there's a section, a subsection of the regulations where you can manually delineate. And so that's the guidance that we're looking for is, are we supposed to be um, uh, editing in stream stats what the boundary is or are we supposed to be actually doing a complete manual delineation and so we really need guidance on that so that we know that we're applying the correct section um, and it um, we until we can really process that and have a definitive then at that point we can really carefully delineate to make sure that we're capturing it accurately and so that's that's why it's taking a little bit longer 
Is that another. choice controversial? So yeah, so I was gonna say, Larry said another way, the DEP regulation requires that you use stream stats as delineation. And there's a subtlety here, and that is within stream stats, you can do a manual adjustment to the delineation. And our question for the state is, how is that? How do we justify a, a manual change to a delineation in stream stats? Um, and there's just, it's literally, it's a USGS tool. It's literally written into the state regulation. Um, so we're trying to understand how the state if there's any precedent, how the state has handled this in the past. I mean, I have to think that they have to deal with this because any urban drainage is gonna have a different contributing area than topographic drainage area. And that is that there's probably more water entering the stream at that point than a topographic delineation might imply. Um, so we just need, we need more help, yeah. Um, will, this be, will this be challenged? Well, we have to assume that it's going to be challenged. And so we want to make sure that we're proceeding on the most solid regulatory footing with whatever decision the commission issues. So whatever the, the outcome is that we are solid on that, because we don't, we don't want to be dealing with a superseding order of conditions where DEP overthrows our decision and right. issues their own. Right. You know, we want to make sure that we're, we are um, solid and following regulatory guidance in how we issue the, the ORAD. Mm -hmm. And but that is also so to say we are building you know we're building our own case about how That's this right happens. right I agree. Yeah. I agree so we're not just looking to fall in with the state but we want to understand what the precedent is yeah mm -hmm. um so with that any other questions from the commission then I want to give it a so, chance go ahead so will this like settle tan brook like <laughs> It's, um, there's no real way to what settle Tanbrook unless no. there's a uh, USGS um, uh, led effort to assess the entire brook to determine its um, perennial intermittent nature. The problem is the way that the regulations work, it's on a case by case property by property basis yeah. and that's how it is and so the commission doesn't have any authority to say this applies to the entire stream because we're only looking at everything upstream of this property and what makes this even more complicated is that there's no no blue line on the there's not even an intermittent no. streamline on the usgs at this point so and i mean just to explain like that would involve just a lot of flow measuring in the stream which takes a lot of time and mm -hmm. um, but that said, I mean, so depending on this designation, it does impact the designation of the Tanbrook downstream because downstream the flow accumulation only increases. Mm -hmm. So it's still relevant to the whole Tanbrook. Mm -hmm. um, okay, All right, guys. <laughs> Keep it up. <laughs> um, so with that, any other? questions or comments? Okay, um, so we're gonna move to members of the public who've joined us for this hearing. Um, so if you have joined us and you're listening in and have any questions or comments for this hearing, um, I invite you to raise your hand. Um, per usual lately, our agenda is extremely tight. So I'm gonna ask that um, we have constructive comments or questions and that you try to limit um, this to about two minutes. If it's getting much longer than that, and it's not moving in a constructive direction, um, we're going to move to the next um, attendee. So um, with that, Rolf Karlstrom is back. So um, Rolf, I'm going to allow you to talk so you can um, ask any questions or um, make any contributions. Yeah, thanks. Um... So I appreciate the independent study. That seems like this was a very productive exercise or step forward. Um, and I haven't had a lot of time to look at the report either. So the continuation seems like the obvious next step. But I actually was gonna ask something that Fletcher started out asking, how can we make this a little more, so could the USGS have listened to your response? Could we bring in or request USGS or others to actually Use, this, use Tanbrook as a study area to, to help define it and get it back on the map, for instance. I think that's important. How do we go about getting that to happen? And is there a way that you or the citizens of Amherst could initiate that process? That's my question. 
Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, I think we don't know what that process looks like. And that's part of what we're trying to understand from the state is really how we go about having kind of an independent scientific determination um, in this area. Um, yeah, so I think, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to say like, you know, we'll, we're gonna have to put a pin on that and, and come back because we just don't know what's done elsewhere in the state. Okay. Um, I, you know, yeah. Yeah, but I've already requested it for the record. You have, <laughs> I've already okay. requested USGS do it. Um, and we're gonna keep pushing in that direction. Okay, and sometimes the academic approach, I, I brought up some work that had been done at UMass, but that didn't get to the actual question either. So um, anyway, that's that's a great answer. Thank you, we'll keep pursuing it. Yeah, and at the bottom, I mean, if the delineation issue can't solve it alone, I mean, there is, another provision in the regulation that is about how much flow is in the stream for how much of the year. And that comes down to measuring it. And there are a lot of creative ways to go about that in partnership with USGS and the state. Um, so we'll certainly pursue all possible avenues to try to get to the bottom of it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for that question. Um, I see Barbara is back. Hello, Barbara. Um, let's see. Uh, so I should be allowing you to talk, Barbara. Yes, thank you. Um, I'll try and be quick on that one too. I just remember last time that we were at this meeting, sort of at the very end, after all this very productive discussion about all the different places where it's wrong and how it could be fixed in different ways, and there seemed to be such a, a wealth of understanding of the issues. I did I hear the representative for the applicant say, well, I'll go back to my client and see if he's willing to go through this. Does he get a choice? Yeah. So I remember that exchange. Um, that was Mickey Marcus saying like, you know, we can pay for a third party review for the delineation of the resource. But what Mickey was intuiting there is that in order to, he's, he was intuiting the, what we are kind of discussing now, which is it's very hard to have an independent delineation of this without a full like blood study, like water engineered watershed study of the tan brook. Um, so I think what he was probably saying is that, I don't know that my client is gonna pay for a multi-year flood study engine watershed study of tan brook. Um, what we're Could talking he be about- responsible for that? What? Would he Could, be responsible for that? Um, we're trying to navigate that, unlikely. Um, I think instead the question here, we, ha we have the resources to understand this delineation, but instead the question is how we proceed um, in a res like regulatory a way that's on strong footing from a regulatory perspective. Um, so I guess that is to say, with the expertise on the commission and with our with Aaron, we're able to pull together a lot of resources to better understand this delineation, but we need to understand how to move forward with the state given the state regulation. So I guess what I'm saying is it's not necessary, necessarily necessary to do that engineered study in order to under improve the designation or change the des let me say change the designation of Tanbrook, but we don't know what that correct process is yet, Barbara. So we're just, well, we're just trying to make sure we're on solid footing as we move forward with the expertise that we have here. Well, I appreciate that. And I appreciate, but I also appreciate that you re remember the comment as well, because that was, you know, after all of that, it, it was very jarring actually. Yeah. And he would just say, no, I don't want to do that. Forget it. We're going to go ahead. Yeah. And, it, it's not that, yeah, that is, that is not going to affect how we move forward for understanding the designation of Tanbrook. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Barbara. Um, anyone else? I see we have many other attendees. Did anyone else have any comment or questions for us? I see Edwin has a question or comment. I'm allowing you to talk, Edwin. Hi, I'm Edwin. I also want to thank the commission for uh, uh, organizing this peer review and um, 
I have to say, I don't really understand uh, many of the uh, points that were made in this peer review. Um, I am encouraged that uh, the question still remains of the determination of the intermittent versus perennial status. And it looks like there's at least some of the criteria seem to be closer to qualifying this book as a perennial. I just have a very simple question about swales. Uh, could some, it, there seems to be maybe one or two swales that are mentioned in this. And it doesn't look to me as I look at different maps that from the, from the uh, SWCA study, it looks like one of them is, doesn't have anything to do with Tanbrook or is it a, a tributary of Tanbrook and another one is a, a man-made swale. So could, could somebody just talk to me about what's going on here? I yeah, can address. Sure. Do you wanna feel yeah, that? Yeah, I, re I read Emily's report and I know what she's talking about. So there's two issues. Um, one of them is that there's an intermittent stream that's located within BVW on the east side of the site that is not flagged. The, BV, the, I, the intermittent stream bank is not flagged. There is a BVW around it is, that is flagged. And the reason for that is because the BVW has a greater extent of resource area than the stream does. So since it's an intermittent stream, the buffer is extending off of the BVW anyway, the 100 foot buffer. So they didn't flag it. So the point that Emily was making there was, we're not confirming the boundary of that intermittent stream because it's not flagged. We are only confirming the boundary of the BVW. Okay. The BVW is more extensive, so it captures more area than the stream does anyway. So from a regulatory standpoint, it doesn't, it doesn't matter so much in terms of, um, because more area is being captured with the, with the BVW delineation. However, it's important to note because we don't want to say all, all bank is flagged on the entire property because it's not. So that's that. Um, the point about the swale, the secondary point about the swale, in the SWCA initial delineation, that swale was not flagged as being jurisdictional. Emily looked at it and she determined that it is jurisdictional. So that area will be added to the delineation as bordering vegetated wetland. That's a fairly large area as, as I look at it. It seems to be. A... Yeah, it'll be added to the SWCA plan. Okay. So, so you will see that on an on a future updated delineation, okay. you'll see that. And that was part of the delay, Edwin, is that we just got those comments from Emily late yesterday. And so SWCA right. didn't have time to change the delineation or right. respond to her comments. Now, I used to run a translation agency. So I think what we need for the abutters and the neighbors is a translation of uh, some of this wetland more technical terminology so that we know what it is that it that we're reading we might need that for a lot of science right now <laughs> i'll take one of those yeah, <laughs> yeah i know Sign me up. Yeah. edwin we got you covered all yeah. right thanks thanks <laughs> put all our heads together yep thank you edwin that's we, all we, thanks we, thanks to the commission for all it. your fine work thank you all right um okay so it looks like we have one another um comment from public attendee michelle hosp you should be enabled to to contribute or ask any questions yep can you guys hear me mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. great thanks so first i want to um really um applaud you guys for all the hard work this has been really helpful I know that that report just came out, so we haven't had a chance to really look at it. And Jen, maybe you're going to um, speak about this, but do you guys have a sense of a timeline of how long this is going to take, exactly what the process is, um, kind of knowing what the parameters are would be helpful. And you may not know, but that's my only question is timeline. Yeah, there's a, that's a great question. And I wish I could um, give you something more definite like I've said, I, where we need guidance from the state to understand how to move forward on solid regulatory footing. Um, and we've reached out to, Aaron has reached out to them multiple times and hasn't heard back. So um, it could be a busy time of year. We need to understand what's going on with them. 
Uh, separate from that, I mean, generally this process would go pretty quickly because the applicant wants to have their resource you know, area delineated so they can move forward with whatever their plans are. And we generally try to facilitate that in a way that of course protects the resource as best we can. Um, so generally what would happen is SWCA would respond to the third party review comments and um, either resubmit a new plan or resubmit a, a partially revised plan. And then we would maybe debate um, areas where we disagreed and that might last another one or two hearings before an approval. So that would be typical, but when we're waiting for the state's input on how we designate Tan Brook, it could, um, it's just an unknown. I don't, I don't know how that's gonna go. Okay, I yeah. appreciate that. So the that. best thing, so unfortunately, um, just attending the meetings and checking the agenda um, as we keep bringing this back up at each meeting is unfortunately the best way to go. Okay, we will do. Thank you so okay. much for all of your work, everyone. Okay, and what I'll do, Michelle, too, is if we can, if we continue again at the beginning of the next meeting, I'll, I'll say, you know, this is what we're continuing this again, or something like that. Um, okay, so that, great. yeah, <laughs> we'll do our best to to help you guys out since I know this is a, it's tough to nail down exactly when these hearings will come up. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for coming. All right, any more comments from attend meeting attendees? Please raise your hand. All right, I'm gonna assume that Edwin's hand is still up from his previous comment. Um, yep, you just put it down and yeah, so I, I think we're okay for now. So unless any commissioners have any final words, questions or comments, um, I think we're looking for a motion or for Aaron to pull up the cheat sheet. Uh, I move, oh, I was so ready this time. I had it pulled up on my yeah. own. Um, I move we continue the public hearing for 52 Fearing Street to uh, October 13th at 7.45 p.m. I second that, Anna. Thank you, Laura. Okay, um, voice vote, Fletcher. Aye. Roy. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Anna. Aye. Laura. Aye. Larry. Aye. And I'm an I. All right. Next. Um, another continuation. This is the ANRAD for 246 Montague Road. Um, and again, SWCA um, requested a continuation. Um, the contract is for the site is being finalized by the town um, and SWCA requested a continuation uh, to the next meeting pending, pending a review. So Aaron, anything to add on that or are we just looking for a motion to continue? I was just gonna say, Jen, I think that there might be a number of attendees who are here about this. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I could be wrong, but that's my yeah. guess. Okay. I would, I might be, we might wanna check on that. That would be my only, okay. as Anna said, that would be my only comment. Okay, Okay. sorry about that. Yep, it looks like we do have a comment. My bad, thanks for reminding me. Um, yeah, so attendees, raise your hand if you have any questions or comments. Um, the overview is that uh, SWCA needs um, is pending a review and um, so we're continuing to the next meeting on October 13th ultimately but um, Hilda looks like Hilda Greenbaum has a question or comment so Hilda you should be able to talk if you unmute yourself. Work. Did you DM me because it wouldn't work. We, we hear Hilda. you now. We hear you now. You hear me now? Yep. Oh, okay. I've got two things to say. One, from having listened to the other hearings, it would be really nice if you followed the procedure that other boards do of have, having people identify themselves by their first and last name and, and also address because some of us aren't neighbors of those neighborhoods, but interested in Tan Brook, and I really don't know who was talking. So I just want to make that as a suggestion. And then I have a question about something you just said that 
contract with the town over 246 Montague Road is something that's being discussed. Did I hear that right? And if so, what is the contract with the town? So there's currently a, uh, the commission voted to have a third party review of the um, ANRAD application. And so oh, okay. when, the, when the commission votes to have a third party review, what happens is that the town, um, myself on behalf of the town, solicits a quote from a third party um, peer reviewer and that the amount of that um, peer review quote um, we ask for from the applicant in the form of a check written out to the town of Amherst. They give me a check and I set up a contract. So that third party peer reviewer is actually working for the town of Amherst in okay. reviewing the delineation that was prepared by the applicant. And we do that Thank so you. that it's like a, a checks and balance on the application to make sure that the delineation is 100% accurate or as accurate as we can make it. That's Thank you for defining that for me. I should have said headline, third party review. <laughs> sub, <Okay>. sub headline, <laughs> we are finalizing the contract for the third party review with the town and SWCA has requested a continuation awaiting that third party review. Yeah, I knew about the third party review, but I didn't realize that the deal with the town was, that was what the contract was. Yep. And I thought it was a, a new loop being thrown in here for us to deal with. Thank no. you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Janet Keller, you had your hand raised and you should be able to talk if you unmute yourself. Hi, Janet Keller, 120 Pulpit Hill Road. I want to just add my thanks to uh, all of you for how hard you're working on this and the professionalism and the expertise um, that you display. Um, it's much appreciated. Thanks. Thanks, Janet. <laughs> Get a thumbs up from Fletcher. <laughs> Happy to do it. Um, okay. Um, Hilda, I'm assuming your hand is still up from your previous comment. Anyone else, um, any other attendees have any questions or comments, please raise your hand. I'm not seeing anyone. Um, so again, we're awaiting the third party review on the resource area delineation for 246 Montague Road. Um, so we're looking for a motion to continue. I'll make the motion to continue the public hearing for 246 Montague Road <laughs> October 13th at 7.50 p.m. Second. Okay, voice vote. Anna. Aye. Roy. Aye. Larry. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Laura. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Who did I forget? I'm an I. Did I forget anyone? Okay. Great. Um, all right. So last hearing, um, this is an RDA. Um, this is Haynes Hydrogeologic Consulting for Kim Harwood for removal of fill from a bordering vegetated wetland, revegetation and vegetation management for an area altered without the benefit of a permit at 121 Pondview Drive in Amherst. Um, since this is a new, RDA, I have to open the public meeting. Um, so the public meeting is now called to order. This meeting is being held as required by the provisions of chapter 131, section 40 of the general laws of the Commonwealth and act relative to the protections of wetland as most recently amended in article 33.31, wetland protection under the town of Amherst general bylaws. Um, so we'll now promote to panelists any attendees. Um, so I'm assuming David is David Haynes. Um, is that you? Is that you? Speaker. Microphone. Oh, there he is. You got him. Yay. <laughs> okay. 
Microphone. Wait. Excuse me. Excuse Microphone. Me. Yes. We got it, Larry. Thank you. Can you hear me now? It seems okay. Yep. So, um, okay. Dave, yeah, so we'll just ask that you introduce yourself and give us an overview of the project and the um, resource area restoration as proposed. Will do. Um, David Haynes with Haynes Hydrogeologic Consulting representing Kim Harwood at uh, 121 Pondview Drive. Um, this is an RDA uh, in response to a, an enforcement order issued by the Conservation Commission for work that was done in the back of his property uh, without benefit of a permit. Um, it was mostly, land, it was landscaping of creating trails, uh, removal of some uh, vegetation, uh, invasive species mostly, and some pruning, uh, put some trails in. Um, and uh, this is a, some of those trails, two of those, two sections of the trails did uh, infringe in, in bordering vegetated wetland areas. Um, and what we are proposing to do is to uh, remove the fill from those wetland areas. And uh, yeah, there's a sketch plan here. It is a sketch plan as required by the, um, by the enforcement order. Um, there is a perennial stream, so there's riverfront area, bordering vegetated wetland, and bank in this area. It is not within a natural heritage habitat. Um, and what we're proposing to do is, this, this is a sketch, it was not, was not flagged in the field and has not been surveyed. The, um, we're proposing to remove two areas of fill that were placed across wetland areas for to establish a trail. Uh, those are shown on the sketch plan. Uh, the the um, eastern area, or the, the western area that that Aaron is is pointing to is about 150 square feet. Uh, we are going to remove that uh, fill. It's in there, and uh, we would like to replace that with a with a uh, bog bridge, just uh, with planks going across it, so the soil doesn't get any more disturbed. The other area is on the western side, right along the edge of the brook, and or the eastern side, excuse me, it's on the edge of the brook. Um, and there is some gravel uh, along the edge of the bank. Uh, we're proposing to remove that fill that's in there and if necessary, replace it with uh, topsoil mixed with compost up to the grade of the wetland and replant it with a combination of high bush blueberry, winterberry, holly on uh, eight to 10 feet on center and seed it with a New England wetland seed mix. If necessary, we'd use some landscape netting in that area to stabilize soils. Uh, this year, everything has been underwater at various times. Um, and there's been experienced high flow, flood, flow, high flows in that area that have come into this area. So perhaps uh, landscape netting would be appropriate to stay, further stabilize it. Uh, there is a plank bridge and I, uh, in my narrative, I caught that I put, uh, put that as the Southern bridge, but that is actually the Northern bridge. That plank bridge is to be removed. Um, and if we if wants to replace it, we'd have to come back with another filing. There is another walking bridge to the south that was permanent. We're not sure when that was put in. Um, that we are, are asking to maintain it. There is a little stone bench uh, along one of the pathways that we would like to leave. We'd like to leave the pathways. Um, and, uh, and then the areas that were cut would like to uh, continue to to remove any invasive species that ever come in that was bittersweet, multiflora rose uh, had, had become established in there that was removed. Uh, there is a lot of regeneration of other species, uh, uh, red maple and some shrubs that are coming back in. We're gonna monitor the, the revegetation of that area and augment it as necessary. Um, as spelled out in the notice of intent. 
and basically um, that is everything if you have any questions. Um, before we go to, thank you, Dave. Um, before we go to questions, Aaron, do you wanna share any site photos and um, any comments you have? Yes, so um, just right off the bat, uh, I, the proposal basically um, as submitted meets what I requested to be um, provided to the commission. Um, I don't, it, uh, have any um, any additions? I think that what Dave has proposed is exactly what I asked for. Um, yeah, and site visit photos right now. For yeah, you. and commissioners, I asked Aaron to put the original enforcement letter in the folder hearing folder for tonight. So if you want to go back and just look at that for your own edification, um, I did check it, and this does address. Um, all of the requests in, in the original enforcement. So this is the stone bench. Um, so this is, this is Mr. Harwood's house here. There's a path that comes down um, from his lawn area. And if you take a right, there's a little stone bench. And this is the um, wood chip pathway that leads down uh, toward the bank. This is taken from up above um, on the hill and right about here is where the um, well and fill was placed. Um, this is a photo of the bank. You can see where there was stone. Uh, it's like kind of a gravel that you would see on a driveway that was placed along this bank here. This is the stone plank that's proposed to be removed. Or the, I'm sorry, the the plank that was proposed to be removed. And this is another shot of, I believe, Dave, correct me if I'm wrong, but this I believe is the area where the fill was placed in the wetland area. There was, I believe, some BBW right here. Yes, that, yep. that's true. And that's where we want to we want to pull out the fill and we'd like to put in a, a, a bog bridge across there with just planks and and mm -hmm. uh, four, by, four by fours. Great. And I feel like I should say on the record that, I mean, this has um, been, you know, a, a little bit of a rocky process, but we appreciate the owner applicant coming to this, this RDA and this hearing and making such a, a great effort at addressing our concerns and protecting the resource. Um, and, you know, we just ap appreciate the process and, and the engagement on this. Um, so we very much appreciate your willingness to work with us and, um, we feel like this is a, a much more protected uh, perennial stream as a result of, of these restoration um, activities. So thank you. Um, and Mr. Harwood has, has become very, um, he, he wanted to fix this. He, he loves the area. I have to say that I saw so much wildlife in that area. It was great. There were, there were blue herons in the stream. There were, wow. there were raccoons running through there. I mean, it was, I, I saw a lot of wildlife in there, but um, yeah. he, he does, he loves the area. He uses the area. He walks through there and he, he, he appreciates that you, you are working with him to, to keep it. Great. Yeah. Hope he continues to enjoy it as much as um, he has before. It is beautiful. Um, all right, so commissioners, unless anyone has any further questions or comments. I just wanted to say, oh. Jen, this is a really good resolution, I think. Looks like a great plan. And I think everyone's gonna walk away much happier than it looked like in the beginning. Thanks, Lorraine. <laughs> Aaron, I had a question about the modern monitoring reports. Um, so you you said annual is you're just is that what we were putting into the motion? Is the goal that being the an, an annual? Sorry, apparently after eight thirty, my brain no longer connects to my mouth. Um, you'd like to see annual monitoring reports from this? That you think that's sufficient going forward? 
I do, but I, I would, I think, um, based on my conversation with Dave Haynes, Dave plans to be present when the work is taking place. So um, as long as Dave is present when the work is taking place, or um, basically what I would like is for him to be present or to inspect that the work has been done, report to us that the work has been done with a written report and photos. And then after that point, an annual report um, until the permit expires, basically. Um, so that's kind of what I had in mind. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Um, the only other question I had was, we mentioned removal of invasives, which always trips my little flag in my head of just making sure that we're specifying that that's not with chemicals, that it's hand pulling and not with machinery. It, the, the, what's been done, there haven't been any chemicals used out there. It's all been yeah. uh, hand, hand removal and, um, um, and, and some pulling up of, of material. But no, I totally believe you. Okay. It's it, it's been on my mind for the past like three meetings. So I just am up again and again. Yeah, yeah it comes up again and again. Um, uh, thank you. Yeah, Jane. and I the only other comment I make if it's okay with everyone else in the commission is I think that those monitoring reports, Dave, you know, pictures with you know decent captions. You know, we're not looking for something heavily, you know, verbose onerous effort for a monitoring report. We just want to know initially that the work has been done with some photos and some decent captions. And then annually thereafter, similarly, just some photo caption, well-captioned photos is 100% sufficient. The goal is not to make work for anyone. Great, thank you. I, I appreciate that. I That's the way I like to work too, so. Yeah, great. So I, just, I have a quick question just about process. Um, so we have an RDA, I'm fine with that but there is an enforcement order in place. So we have to, um, where does that play in? So they have, he, the, all the work has to be done first and to, up to the specs in order to lift that enforcement order. Is that correct? Right. So the, them well, completing this work would effectively bring them into compliance. And so yeah, at that I'm point, saying. then the enforcement order would be lifted. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> so regardless of, um, so if we do do a negative determination here tonight, that enforcement order is still in place until um, the conditions are, are met. Correct. Yep. Okay. Just just okay. Just confirming. Yep. Thanks, Fletcher. And I should make that like classic clarification that a negative determination here is means yes, please move forward with this mm -hmm. work as described. Um, no, you do not need to do a full permit process here. Um, so mm -hmm. a negative determination is allowing this to proceed as described. It's a good thing in, in this yep. context. I know you Got know it. that. Sure, I was just clarifying that for the record. Sure. <laughs> um, okay, so unless anyone has any other questions, thank you, Dave. Um, anyone else, I'm doing a quick scan. I'm not seeing any hesitation here. So we're looking for a motion. Oh, no, you took it away from me. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was just looking to see if anybody in the public, there was anyone in the public. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I had assumed that those, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. Thank you, Aaron. Um, yeah. So we still have attendees in the meeting. There were all people who have commented on past hearings. So I'm, I apologize. I assumed that they I were can't not. See, I can't see attendees when I'm sharing my screen. You can take so it away. I had no way of knowing. Yep. So sorry. Sorry. Meeting public attendees, um, thank you for hanging with us. If anyone has any questions or comments about this RDA for 121 Pondview Drive, please raise your hand and I will enable you to speak. Now, I think we're okay. All right. Did this, give, did this give Anna enough time to write it down in your hand? <laughs> yes. Um, okay, so I move we issue a negative determination under the wetlands bylaw box three and a positive determination under the local wetlands bylaw box five for 121 Pond View Drive um, with the inclusion of annual monitoring reports and um, Dave Haynes being present at the uh, beginning of construction or not construction, beginning of work. So onset of work. What did I do wrong? Yeah. So just, we during need a monitoring work. Sorry, report. Sorry. Yeah. So Dave is on site during the work. We need a monitoring report once the work is complete. Correct. And then yeah. annually thereafter annually. for the duration of the permit. Yep. Do you want me to say it again? No. That. Okay. I got it. I think our our powers combined. All right. Good. <laughs> 
Okay. And I heard a second, but I forgot who it was. Leroy. Leroy. Okay. Second by Leroy. Uh, voice vote. Leroy. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Anna. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Larry. Aye. Laura. Aye. And I am an I. Um, all right. David, thank you once again. Um, best of luck with the with the restoration. Thank you. Thank you very much and have a have a good evening. Thank, thank you so time. much, Dave. Thank for, you. For, for your understanding in the situation. <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. Okay. Great. So with that, we're at the end of our public hearings. Um, and I know Aaron had a, another couple other business slides to get through. Yeah, nothing. Uh, it's actually just, just one. Um, and it's really nothing that requires any um, action on behalf of the board. Um, the Faringbrook floodplain restoration project is another one of the big ones that's underway right now. And um, uh, Beth Wilson did make a note change on the plan, which I wanted to make you guys aware of, which is very simple, but I'm trying to keep you guys informed of all these things. Um, basically, um, they want to install some additional queer logs um, where the uh, Faring Brook enters the Fort River. They're beautiful, um, very nice queer logs, and it just adds some additional stability. So I don't really, it's so minor. I don't think you guys need to approve anything. I just wanted to make you aware that those were being added in, and hopefully you guys are okay with that. Um, no, I just lost my share screen. Sorry, that was bad. Okay, so the other, um, the other one, I'm, I'm just going to talk about them. You guys don't need to see the slide. The second one is just a minor Eversource change, and I am tracking those changes and keeping track of the resource area impacts. I'm waiting for the resource area impacts as a result of that, but it's basically a very minor change, just some additional, an additional pad on the corner of a BVW, but um, I will check the resource area impact numbers before giving the green light on that. I just wanted to keep you informed. I am checking those, doing a checks and balance every time those come through. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to ask is, under the Wetland Protection Act, there are standard exemptions um, for certain activities. And one of them is road maintenance, um, when roads are repaved within the existing road footprint. Under our local bylaw, that exemption does not exist. It is in one of the um, revisions that we have marked up for our um, bylaw revisions. And right now, DPW proceeds under sort of the same standards under as um, Wetland Protection Act, which is that we're notified basically when the road is going to be paved. They don't file a whole notice of intent application when a road is going to be repaved. They don't file a notice of in, or a, um, a request for determination when a road will be repaved. I have no problem with that. No community that I've ever worked for has ever required um, a permit filing for road maintenance. So I'm just putting that out there right off the top. We did get a request for a private road in Amherst called Crossbrook, Crossbrook to be repaved because it's uh, damaged with a lot of potholes. They're basically just wanting to repave the existing roadway. Um, not expanding the footprint, not changing drainage at all, just rep repaving. And they want to know if um, they should submit a wetland filing. And so I wanted to, it's a tricky one because DPW doesn't file to do their repaving. I don't see a reason for them to have to file. We're aiming toward updating our bylaw so that it's in line with the state and kind of more, more in line with the expectations of standard statewide um, maintenance. I just wanted to put it past you guys before I gave them that guidance, if that's how you feel or if you agree or disagree. I don't think it's necessary for them to file, especially if we don't require the town to. Okay. Anyone else have any objections? I, I agree. agree. Do you want to get like notified though, Aaron? Do you care? 
Yeah, we do get notified. You get notified. Um, we get notified. Right? Yeah, okay. we get notified by DPW when they're doing the repaving. Yeah, and they do okay. use erosion controls when there's wetlands. So that would be the same standard. They would have to notify me and use erosion controls <coughs> to protect the wetlands during the repaving process. But that's that's basically all I would require. I just want to be clear, and there's no extension, it's just a repave, same footprint. Correct. If it's only applies for maintenance of existing roadway um, on the existing footprint, if there's any road widening involved at all, they have to refile. Um, if they're expanding, you know, extending the road in any given area, um, if it's gravel and they're adding pavement, they still have to file. It's just repaving existing pavement. Okay, yeah, thanks for running that by us. I don't think okay. that was necessary. That's all I have for you this evening. What? Okay, great work, team. Man, yes. you guys are on it. It's not even nine o'clock. That's right. <laughs> well, we were lucky because if we had had to dive into any of the any one of those um, ANRADs, we would have it would have been probably ten or later. <laughs> Later than 10, yeah. Yes, with, I guess uh, it's coming. Yeah. It's coming. It's coming yeah, around the bend. Time. Next time. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, everyone. I'm doing it. Can I make the motion? Yeah. Make a yeah. motion to adjourn. Yeah. I can. Oh, Laura got me. Laura got me. That's fine. Laura, okay. Vo voice vote. Larry. Aye. Roy. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Okay. Aye. Laura. Aye. Anna. Aye. I'm an I. All right, guys. Thank you so everyone. much. Have a good night. Bye, Bye everyone. Hang I got in there you back. Support you, Anna. Dang. <laughs> Bye. See you guys. Bye.